a lot of us cross that bridge all the time. So yeah, that could have been any one of us. Right now at six, shock and sadness in Baltimore as people mourn the six workers who are presumed dead after the key bridge collapse. Many holding on tight to their faith this morning. 24 hours and we're learning more about what led up to the cargo ship slamming into the bridge's support beam and the long lasting impacts the collapse will have. And with the Baltimore Bridge collapse top of mind, we're taking a look at the safety of our bridges here in Connecticut. Fox 61's Brooke Griffin will join us live from one of the state's major bridges with the details. All local, all morning. This is Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Six o'clock Wednesday morning. Good morning to you. We're glad you're starting your day off here. I'm Erica Arias. And I'm Symphony Privet. We will have much more on out of the Baltimore this morning in just a few minutes. But first, let's get you up to speed with what's happening outside here back at home. Checking in with meteorologist Matt Scott. Good morning. Yeah, this is the rainy day, yeah. right? Yeah, actually tonight, tomorrow is the rainy day. Today is just we've just been slowly deteriorating mm. the forecast. <laughs> Today is marginally better only because it's marginally milder, a few degrees better than yesterday, which was not great temperature wise. The rain gets here tonight. And it hangs out through tomorrow, even into Friday early for Good Friday. Here's the good news. Your Easter holiday is going to be under a decent amount of sunshine. I love the weekend forecast. We just got to get there. Cloud and radar picture shows you a little bit of thicker cloud coverage on the way out. Have no fear. There's more coming in. Still have a wind out of the north, although it's much lighter than it's been the last couple of days. 38 is not bad in Hartford, 41 in New Haven, 40 in Groton. Your winds about 5 to 10 out of the north, so we'll drop it down to 29 in Torrington, 33 in Hartford, 36 in New Haven. That's not bad at the bus stop. It's just not a great looking forecast. Limited, if any, sunshine. As the temperatures bump up leading into this cold front, temperatures getting to the mid 50s later on. Next couple of days, not great. Weekend forecast, much better. We'll talk about it all coming up. 602, first time this morning, I get to say hello to Rachel Piscatelli. Good morning. Hey, good morning, Matt. Overall, looking pretty good across the board here. The road work that I brought to you in the earlier hour, last hour, uh, over in Waterbury has cleared for the morning commute. So that means that the exit or the on ramp to 84 out by exit 33 on Route 8, that is also open for the morning commute now, which is great news. Also, looking over in Harford now, 84 east and westbound, volume is rather light traveling into the capital city. Those drive times right Right through the capital look just fine this morning here at 603. Your Waterbury drive times also look good this morning. And taking a look across the state here, New Haven uh, 95 looks good in both directions. Brantford more of the same with light volume and 91 over in Rocky Hill looks fine as well. Just be mindful that there could be some sneaky areas of fog this morning to greet you out the door. So just be mindful of that. Well, send things back over to you. Already, thank you, Rachel. 603 now this morning. The six people still missing after the Francis Scott Key Bridge collapse in Baltimore are presumed dead. Yeah, officials say those people were part of a construction crew filling potholes on the bridge early yesterday morning. Coast Guard crews are set to resume their search and recovery efforts right now. They stopped the search last night due to dangerous conditions in the water. Officials said the dive teams dealt with cold water and rushing water that could shift pieces of the bridge and then put crews in danger. Now, as for the collapse, authorities say it happened after a cargo ship slammed into one of the support beams. That ship's crew issued a mayday call just moments before the crash. Maryland's <laughs> governor said that call allowed authorities to stop vehicles from entering the bridge. Now, there are reports the cargo ship had lost power and the ability to steer. Mm. None of the crew members on board the ship were injured. The National Transportation Safety Board will lead this investigation into what happened. The agency says this is not a time to talk about when things will get back to normal, but it is a time to focus on the victims of this collapse. Right now it's about people. It's about uh, families uh, and uh, Addressing the needs of those that were impacted, that's the focus. I don't think anybody in that room right now at the command post is thinking about what are the next steps to get things cleaned up. People across Baltimore gathered at the city's Mount Olive Baptist Church last night to pray for the victims of the collapse. Many say it is time for the community to come together. 
Prayer is very real, prayer is very powerful, and we all need it from time to time in our lives. This is something that transcends whatever differences we may have in our faiths. So there's a need for us to come together and support, whether it's our spiritual support and our prayers, or the resources that we have to help one another. Community members will gather for another vigil tomorrow morning at Patterson Park Observatory in Baltimore. Now, even though that bridge collapse appears to be an accident, the incident is shining a light on bridge safety. Yeah, we're checking in with Fox 61's Brooke Griffin. She's joining us live in New Haven this morning with a closer look at the state of bridges across Connecticut. Good morning, Brooke. Yeah, good morning to you. We were able to dig through the latest Connecticut bridge inspection reports earlier this morning, and what we found was that many bridges in our state have actually been labeled in what's called a poor condition, meaning they need to be repaired or replaced in order to be as safe as they should be legally, according to state and federal law. Now they are looking at general wear and tear on those bridges, and that's what's becoming that safety concern. Since yesterday's shocking collapse in Baltimore, many of the longtime Connecticut residents say this reminds them of the Mianus Bridge collapse back in 1983. Although instead of a blunt impact, records show that collapse happened due to corroded support structures. That Greenwich, Greenwich Bridge collapse also happened just after midnight, such as the Baltimore one. It killed three people and injured three others. Experts say newer bridges have been built with stronger support against impacts. But like the Greenwich Bridge, the Baltimore Bridge was in place for decades when tragedy struck. Uh, in which case, this was an old bridge and it, and it wasn't protected as uh, well as some of the newer bridges might be. But the size of tankers have increased over the years. This is a bridge that's built back in the 70s, so uh, it's much older. Uh, and it just wasn't prepared to handle that kind of impact. Uh, so it's not a surprise that it collapsed, uh, but of course, a very rare occurrence. This brings us to question our state's bridges and how they've been maintained. Recent inspection reports show out of more than the 4,000 bridges across the state, more than 1,200 of them are considered to be in good condition, which is the best ranking, although 3,000 or so are in fair condition. And it's that last number that we're going to look at, though. Around 200 bridges are in the poor category, showing that these need to be repaired, fixed, or just replaced in general to be considered up to state and federal code. Now, I do want to find out more about those specific 200 or so bridges. I plan on reaching out to DOT a little closer to business hours when the sun comes up and talking with them about which of these bridges are in that condition, that poor condition, and if they are going to be replaced or at least slated for construction already. We'll have more on that coming up later this afternoon. Live in New Haven, Brooke Griffin, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. All right, Brooke, thanks. We appreciate you digging in a little bit further into that. We'll check back for sure. Now, of course, there is a concern of what the disruption at the Port of Baltimore could mean for people here in Connecticut when it comes to the supply chain. Yeah, now with the bridge blocking a major shipping channel, nothing can be shipped in or out of one of the busiest ports along the East Coast. Cargo ships that bring products through the port will be rerouted to other ports. Now, that could lead to delays and increasing costs due to increased congestion for importers. Now, before the crash, at least six ships were scheduled to arrive at Baltimore's port through Saturday. The Connecticut Retailers Network is evaluating how this could affect stores in our state. So the president of the networks said businesses are assessing how this will impact supply chain and will work to implement recovery or diversion strategies as needed. And went on to say that retailers in Connecticut and beyond will do everything possible to prevent any extended disruptions to customers. And it's not just cargo ships being impacted. Cruise ships are as well. Many will need to be rerouted, creating headaches for people who were supposed to return to port this weekend and those set to leave for their upcoming cruises. President Biden says the government will give all the resources possible to rebuild the bridge. Make sure you stay with us here on Fox 61 for the very latest on the bridge collapse and the aftermath. We'll have updates throughout the morning right here on TV and Fox 61 Plus. And of course, you can download the free Fox 61 News app. Just uh, scan that QR code on your screen right there for the latest developments on demand. 609 in Cheshire police say a pedestrian was taken to the hospital after getting hit by a vehicle. It happened last night near the intersection of South Main Street and South Brooksvale Road. Now, we don't know the condition of the person this morning, but officers say their injuries are considered serious. 
And we have new details this morning about an aggressive fox reported near Church Street in Putnam. Police say they found the creature, got it tested, and it turns out it does have rabies. Anyone who may have been in contact with the animal is being asked to get medical attention. Now, police are reminding you to not feed or approach any wild animals. Unfortunately, more car break-ins reported this time in Middletown, where police say nearly two dozen break-ins happened in the overnight hours on Monday. Officers say they got 21 calls for suspects breaking car windows, stealing items, including cash in the north end of the city. They didn't say which streets were impacted, though. Officers believe at least three people are involved and were driving a white four-door BMW sedan. The department says they have surveillance video showing this. However, they didn't share that video with us. They are reminding people, though, to keep personal and valuable items out of their vehicles. Don't leave them in your cars. Anyone with information is asked to call Middletown Police.